Welcome to the Blue Wave Podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about Level 1. What I mean by Level 1 is not just age group Level 1E and Level 1M, but basically what is it that we need to accomplish within Level 1 to make sure that the athletes have the mindset, skills, and behaviors that they need to be successful when they get into Level 2. So on our tab, we have training groups up here in the upper right. And you can see that if you go down here to age group level one, we have this that comes up. Talks a little bit about what we do and what the requirements are to get into it. And to get into this age group level one, basically you have to take care of all the things that you need to know in the manta rays and sharks. So that's uh, fodder for another podcast. But right now, the main thing is, is that once you get to this level, you have to really start thinking about the physiological, psychological, tactical, technical, performance-based aspects of a swimmer and what they're doing and what they need to be addressed within the workouts. So from a physiological standpoint, it's really pretty simple. These are the exit requirements, by the way, not the entry requirements. This is what they should be leaving age group one with. So from a physiological standpoint, really you're looking about competing the whole practice session. Okay, so it's not like you got to stop in the middle and go to the bathroom and do this or get out in the middle of a set to get water. You should have your water handy with you. It's just one of the things that you really have to be able to do is say, okay, I'm here to work and um, I'm going to do the whole thing and do it the way it's set out to be. So that's the number one thing. You also should be able to swim for 20 minutes without breaking form for freestyle. Okay, that's nonstop, not fast, just smooth, repetitive. You can successfully compete the training sets for the group advancement. You can see that at the bottom of the page. If I scroll down here, it's 10 100s freestyles on 220, 4 200 IMs on 5 minutes, and one of the following sets, 6 100s flyer back on 220, or 6 100s breaststroke on 240. These are all yards, by the way, yards, not meters. Now, before I get too much into level 1, there's some of the things that are going to be so critical that they learn in this stage that sometimes a lot of seniors don't even have. So we want to make sure that we're setting our people up for success long term by giving them these skills early. Okay, also you want to make sure that the swimmer has done a 50 yard or meter in every stroke as well as 100 IM in a sanctioned competition. That can be AAU, USA Swimming, whichever ones that we have. Now, probably this is the psychological skills which I call the advanced you know, interpersonal skills, and they got to be positive, um, are the most important parts of any of the levels that we have. Okay. Swimmer understands that they're part of a team and has respect for their teammates. That's crucial. The swimmer listens to recommendations from the coaches and are willing to try the appropriate corrections. Okay. So when we say, hey, get those elbows up nice and high, we're not yelling at you or getting mad at you. We're trying to get you better. And when you realize that, then you'll take that constructive criticism in the manner it's meant. And during a practice, the swimmer will leave on time, not early, okay, not late, but on time. Start and finish at the wall, okay, no walking when you get to the flags, and you're moving over so your teammate who's behind you can also finish at the wall. Swimming the sets as designed. So many times I see people that say, well, we're doing 2025's fly. I think I'm going to do right arm, left arm, two arms. No, it's not it. We're not drilling. We're actually doing the fly set. So at this stage, you're going to really learn that what we say is what you're going to be doing, and we're doing that for a reason. You swim the entire sets. No walking on the bottom, sitting out, doing the little arm thing, stretching, or hiding underwater. Yes, we can see. Okay, you can accurately count and compute your distances. We had a little webinar last week at the time of this recording, and we were talking about this one thing. And I know from personal experience, when I was younger, sometimes I would be doing long sets and I would forget if I was on 200 or 250. But it's really staying in the moment that allows you to do that, not drifting off to some sort of Netflix binge in your mind where you not know what you're doing. And one of the other things that I had to learn as a young swimmer was not to rely on other people counting, take control of my own counting. And that was important. You also, at this stage, should you know, demonstrate a willingness to help clean up at the end of practice. The pool area is kind of like our little sanctuary, and we want to have respect for that as well. So we got to make sure that everything's picked up and cleaned at the end of the day, even if it's not your stuff. Okay, And also, at this stage, you want to start to talk to your coaches before and after each race, if that's possible. Okay, Get some advice before you do this, so you can have some 
tactics that you can take a look at and try in a race situation. Get some feedback on how you did so you can make improvements. But by communicating with your coaches, that's going to make it a lot easier. One of the other things at this stage I like to impress is make us a partner in your schoolwork. If you have a great report card, let us know. If you have some sort of uh, issue at, at school, maybe we know somebody who can help. So let us, let us be there for you. We want to help not just in the pool, but outside as well. You want to also at this stage learn to work well with your training partners, even if you're not the best of friends when you're not on the pool deck or even when you're on the pool deck. But, you know, teammates are different than best friends. I tell our own kids that if you have five true friends in your life, you are truly blessed. Okay, it's not how many people you have as, as true friends. It's having real true friends. So on a team of two, three, four, five hundred, not everybody's going to be the best of buddies, but you can be the best teammates possible. And then the other thing I like people to learn at this stage is not to be influenced by the negative behavior or actions of their teammates or peers. Look, misery loves company. When people are down, they want to bring you down with them. So just don't go down that rabbit hole when somebody's having a bad day. On the flip side, you could be the positive influence that helps turn them around. Now, these are very high-level things for young, young swimmers. But if we can impress upon the kids at this stage, it's going to make everything else so much easier moving forward. All right, so that to me is the most important part of the entire level system, is level one, psychological. Because without that, we can't move forward. Let's moving forward, um, we look at the tactical aspects. At this stage, you want to make sure that the swimmer can begin a sprint freestyle race with great streamlines, great underwaters, perfect breakout without breathing on the first three strokes in freestyle, and then finishing from the flags to the wall with a strong kick, without a breath, with a perfect finish. So the start and the finish are the tactical aspects that we are looking for in the level one. You hear me all the time, underwater, underwater, underwater. Well, it's because underwater is so much faster than above water. So if we can impress that upon the kids at this phase, then when they become senior level athletes, it's already a fit and complete. They, they know how to do it because they've been doing it their whole lives. From a technical ass point, you can vocalize all the concepts that are on the swimmer stroke card. And we'll do another episode on that as well. And that basically breaks down each stroke into five separate areas with five separate pointers that you can take a look at, like your rhythm, your underwaters, your legs, your arms, your your rhythm okay so you can also make sure that um, you consistently demonstrate those proper streamlines off the walls from a technical aspect so when you get tired try not to just let those arms dangle and come right up with a breath you want to make sure that you're consistent with your underwaters when you're tired and when you're not you're also not breathing off the wall when you're doing freestyle throughout practice so that first stroke bottom hand without a breath every time Okay, these are important things to instill on the swimmers now so we don't have to worry about it later on. You can swim 50 yards or meters of all four competitive strokes with reasonable rhythm and correct breathing. Okay, now look, we're all not going to be you know, blessed with gifts for every stroke. I know personally I had some knee issues and my breaststroke was a little compromised. So if you're, you're a little off on one of the strokes but you're working on it and you have all these other things, you're probably ready to move on. You can also start from the block, execute legal turns, and have proper finishes for all four strokes, not just in the races, but in the practices as well. So really, this level is crucial to get that foundation so we can have success moving on. All right, I'm glad that you listened to this podcast. Look for level two next. Again, I'm Coach Rich Rogers from Blue Wave. Thank you for listening.